What is up, y'all? We are here at the Subterranean Shunning Grounds. More specifically, the Cathedral of the Forsaken. We just killed Moog, the boss down here. I mentioned there is a secret. And check this out. If you hit this altar here, it reveals a secret passageway. Very easy to miss. Um, however, it turns out that we are not able to explore this area more thoroughly because we have this sealed by Morgoth, the Grace Given, who ha actually happens to be the boss of this area. Well, the, I should say the capital. So we have to kill him first. So we are headed back to the capital to finish our business there. Um, we're going to warp right here to the Avenue Balcony. And we are going to carry on uh, through the capital here. We're going to make a, a, a solid dent in the remaining content here in the capital in this episode. We're probably not going to finish the whole thing. But uh, we're going to get a lot done nonetheless. Um, pick this loot up. Smithing Stone 6. And uh, there are a few enemies in this area that are going to be annoying. Um, what we're doing is we're running towards this dragon, this dragon skeleton wing. And um, these guys are going to aggro to us, and some may even chase after us. But as long as we're fast, we should easily be able to outrun them. So hop up this dragon wing, and he's following us too. There's actually some loot on the dragon wing, some crafting materials, these gravel stones. Um, there's some along the way that you can pick up. I mean, not essential, but they're there if you want to pick them up. Just kind of mash triangle as you go. And see, this guy is following us, but as long as you stay on the move, he's not going to be able to hurt you. And if he is causing too much of a trouble, just, just fight him and take him out. Um, got a rune arc here. And we're going to head up this ladder. Once we're up the ladder, he's not going to be able to do anything to us. Or can he even follow us here? I don't think so. So, yeah, we're good. So up the stairs, got another guy here. Not going to let him get his attack going. Come on. What else you got? Oh, shield bash. I jumped right into that one. That's fine. Up, oh, spear combo. He's giving me some trouble. It's always the spear enemies in these games that give me the most trouble. And, and and Dark Souls in general, I'm always I'm always weaker against spear wielding enemies than I am against sword or axe type enemies. All right, so I got more gravel stones here. There's an ambush right here. Ha! Oh, I'm barely not able to one shot these guys with the with the R1 attack, but oh well, that's fine. All right, get the gold rune eleven. And up here's another side of grace. I think it's starting to get to be around evening time. So I am going to go ahead and reset the time. Even though it's going to respawn those guys back there, but that's fine. Because it does get hard to see at nighttime. In these areas, it's not so much the extra enemies that spawn at night because no extra enemies will spawn. But it's the visibility is a little bit lower. So, All right, we're going to uh, head this direction. And there's going to be a, a uh, giant gargoyle. Next to a couple of bubblers. The giant the giant gargoyle is, is our main focus here. And he's actually, in my opinion, I think he's harder than the boss in this area. He's optional. You take him out once, he doesn't respawn. But uh, he can be a pain. And you can't summon here for this fight either, which is um, a little bit of a shame. But he, And the, the bubbler guys, if he hits in that direction, he will actually take him out, as you just saw. Um... You gotta respect his his distance and his ability to to hit really hard. All right, so now he's taking his axe out. Ah, uh, he dodged my follow-up attack as he went airborne, and he did it again. Ooh! So you see how hard he hits. It's pretty ridiculous. I'm just gulping down my flasks. Uh, I went for a charged heavy there. Probably not the best option given how fast he moves. And sometimes I get the good dodges and sometimes I just get smacked, but oh well. There we go. Took care of him. As I said, he's probably harder than the bosses in this area. And, uh, 
Fortunately, he does not respawn. But for our trouble, we can pick up this golden seed. So we are going to backtrack just a little bit here. Uh, let's see. Down here. It's going to be a one of these. Oh, he's do, he's got the triple shot. Oh, my gosh. If you get hit by that triple shot, it's it's trouble. And then here we get a smithing stone six. And we are going to drop down here in just a minute. But there's actually some other stuff we want to get first before we drop down there. And we are going to head that way too. But we're just going to kind of work our way front to back. So we can go under here as well. Circle back around here to get the cane sword. There are some enemies over here too. Here we can get a gold rune nine. We'll take this guy out as well. And this is a switch. This lever here will um, open up this gate directly below us. So that's like the main road. We fought a uh, Erd Tree avatar here. And this, this is where we kind of started in this area. Um, this main road of the capital. Over here we fought the Crucible Knight and that kind of thing. Um, so we just opened up that door below us, which, which technically creates a shortcut to the spot where we're about to go. So to get there, um, all you have to do is see that roof right below us. Just roll off the edge here and you'll land on that. Well, or you can just walk off the edge and you'll land off the roof. You're, you won't take damage. Um, so there are a couple Landell Knights down here. There's the Snipe, the, the Archer. Um, you don't want to fight both of these at the same time. So I recommend luring this other guy kind of over here, fight him solo, and then you can go over there and fight the other one solo. I'm inside, sucker. There we go. All right, I'm going to fight him in here. I'm going to do a double chug. No, sirree. You're not doing that again. Jeez. See, the, the spear attacks are just so quick. And he has the advantage of being able to hide behind a shield while he does them. There we go, finally. So we get the uh, gravel stone seal. Uh, I believe that boosts lightning incantations. I'm going to circle around here and uh, hopefully dodge this archer. Back behind here, some loot. Now it's time to take on the archer. Fortunately, the archers, in, in level of difficulty of the Landell Knights, the spear ones are the hardest, followed by the sword ones, followed by the archers. But when you get close enough, the archers will, will pull out a sword, so... Just keep that in mind. But they still try to use their bow for a while, and you can use that to your advantage while they're trying to switch out to their sword. And it's convenient that we killed him up here because this is where we wanted to go next. You can run along this uh, dragon skeleton, run all the way to the end of his fingernail there. You can jump on this roof. And this is a makeable jump. It is tough. You have to jump at the very end, and there's no other way to get up here. But jump at the very end, sprint through the whole jump, and you should make it up top. Get a smithing six and a stone sword key. And in here, this is another one of those moments in the game in my first playthrough that blew my mind. Um, so there's that gate we opened up that I mentioned before. So in here, this should look familiar to you because this is the real life version of the round table hold. So what we're in now, the fort, this is called the fortified manor. This is the area that the round table hold was designed after. Um, so the round table hold kind of exists sort of in the middle of nowhere, I guess. Um, but this is the real life version of it. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the round table hold that we go and visit was designed after this place. Very similar to 
um, to other games in From Software's catalog where you have your hub world that is just that you warp to and from and you do things there, you you know, power up there and stuff like that. But then you find it you find it as an actual location in the real world. And uh, that that is the case in this game as, as well. Very nice touch, in my opinion. Uh, so we got the flightless bird painting. That is our fifth painting, I believe. Um, and the yes, this is our fifth one flightless bird. Um, the solution for this one is in the Windmill Village, Northern Altus Plateau. I'm going to go ahead and rest up and get my uh, flasks back. So we will be getting the solution to that painting as well. Next, we're going to go through this door. See an item up there. We'll be able to get that in just a bit. So yes, this is the first floor of what we know as the round table hold. Two fingers prayer book. And here there's a couple of dudes, but I don't think there's any loot. But just so you know, we covered everything. You haven't missed something. And now, we're about to have some fun. Go through these doors. And directly ahead of us, we have an abductor virgin. I'm a huge fan of fighting these things. Not really. Oh my gosh. I was trying to attack him with his door open and got grabbed right away. Again, when you get grabbed, mash all the buttons on the controller. And the grab attack will take less damage than if you just let it run its course. Yeah, that attack does bleed damage. And it's pretty haphazard. It's hard to, like, predict where it's actually going to go. So you just have to do your best to stay away from it. Oh, no. The second one's come. Oh, this is worst case. This is... Ah. The second one saw me. I thought he was coming in here, so I panicked. But that, my friends, is why we unlocked the Sight of Grace uh, back uh, in that other room before we went here. Yeah, the abductor, uh, the abductor versions, I, I suck at fighting those things, if you haven't been able to tell. Usually I just avoid them, but here I, I, I feel like they're not as avoidable because there's loot in the area. He's like steamrolling me. He, he missed though. Haha, ha, you missed your grab. Gotcha. Oh, there's the other one. Normally, the other one's in the courtyard. I much prefer the ones that have the swinging axes as opposed to the ones that have the pizza slicers. I'm getting grabbed. I got a hit, though, so I'll call it a win. Here we go. Got him. All right. Enough of that. I wish I got an item back here. And this, this area is quite sprawling. It, it kind of sucks. I mean, it, it, that it won't allow you to mount your horse in here, but I get why because it's, you know, it's technically considered a dungeon, even though it's out in the open air. But the amount of walking on foot they have to do is, is quite extensive in this place. Stormhawk axe. And some nascent butterflies. So in here... 
you'll notice that we have a divine bridge uh side of grace how we got there we got there quite early actually and the way we got here was from the, the weeping peninsula the tower of return there was a trap chest i think it was either a trap test chest or a teleport that took us here and there was a giant axe wielding golem on top i believe they're called and we took it out uh, but there was a uh, talisman up there, and there was also a warp point that didn't function. But now, since we're getting there via the capital, um, the warp point is functional, although it doesn't really serve us much of a purpose yet. I'll show you what I mean. So we already have the Side of Grace up here unlocked because, as I said, we were warped here via, via a trap chest, I believe it was. Um, so we have the Side of Grace already activated. And the and the 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 giant's already gone because I already killed him, and the the uh, talisman that we got was over there, and before this portal wasn't active, but now it is active. What it'll do is um, I don't want to do it now because I don't want to reset the enemies, but it'll warp you to another divine tower like out in the middle of nowhere, like over here, and we can't do anything over there. There's not even a side of grace that we can unlock. Um, and we can't get inside of it because we don't have the great rune that's associated with that tower. But if you want to take a peek, go ahead. Be my guest. Um, so that's, uh, you know, an, a, a nice little uh, connection to something that we did earlier. And uh, I remember here, we we we, uh, we warped here. And I was like, take a look at this. Like, we're right next to the Erd tree. Pretty cool view. Um, but now we'll head on back down and I, I didn't want to respawn those abductors and I guess we you know I, I could have warped to uh, that uh, side of grace that we had at, at round table or the, 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 the real round table I should say but nonetheless I've already taken these things out and we'll carry forward so um, now what we need to do is explore the rest of this Kind of ground level area. There's really not much left down here. There's a couple dogs. Nothing on these roofs. I don't think there's anything behind them either. And you see there's nothing on the rooftops, and I don't think there's anything in or behind. Yeah. So if you're wondering how to get to the upper floor of the real round table hold, head over here. Hop on this roof, and then over here, pick up this item. And this takes us to the upper level. Probably a little bit more familiar with the upper level. We spend much more time on the upper level than we do the lower level. But uh, this is the room where Fia killed D in, you know, kind of our parallel universe. And of course, this is where um, our weaponsmith sits. And that's where Rodrika sits. So we got the Sanctified Wet Blade. That will allow you to equip, uh, I believe, Lightning and Holy Affinities to your uh, armaments if you have an Ash of War. All right, got down there. Got a smithing six. And here is Fia's Chambers. Get the Buy My Sword gesture and a Hero's Rune. And on the table, I have a Rune Arc. Then on the balcony, we got Smithing Stone 5. Turn down here. Check out Gideon's room. That's where the uh, merchant sits. Here's the Dung Eater's room. And we get a seedbed curse. Speaking of the Dung Eater, that's our second one that we have. There are six of them total in the game that I know of. You need five of them to complete his quest. Oops, wrong way. Then we need to go in the, the door here where the fingers 
would be. That going in here in the real world does not affect anything in the actual round table hold, so don't worry about that. All is good. Okay, we can pick up Coded Sword. Uh, I believe it's a faith based. Where is the Coded Sword? Here we go. Yeah, it requires 20 faith to use. Um, so it can't, it's, it's unblockable. Um, you can uh, imbue the Cypher Blade with light, extending its length, and then strike with a sudden sweeping attack. This attack cannot be blocked. So you see, it's, 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 it's not like a physical sword. It's almost like a lightsaber. Um, but it requires 20 faith to use. So, you will head out the way we came. And now it's time to head up this tree route. And do some exploring. So, uh, let's see. For starters, we'll go down here. So that's where we fought the giant gargoyle. And we'll just go up these stairs. There's going to be a couple baddies we got to take out. This guy, let me get a critical on him. These guys are are pretty tough, um, unless you get get the surprise on them. So actually, um, down here, you can drop. You will take fall damage, but if you drop from this spot, it should not be lethal. You can put on the the cat's ring or use a soft cotton if you don't want that fall damage. You swing over here real quick. See that beacon we placed earlier? There's that broken bridge that you couldn't get across from before. Um, so now we're on the other side of that bridge, and we can get that piece of loot that was uh, hanging out over here. Smithing stone six. And I want to access my map to take that beacon off. There we go. So I'm going to head back to that route and go back up. And there are enemies on these roots. And there is a chance that they'll drop their weapon. So now we are going to go back to where we were, where we fought that axe wielding guy. Whoop. We're going to head up the hill. As I was saying before, you know, this is a lot of walking that we have to do. It'd be nice if we had access to our horse, but uh, we unfortunately do not. There's another guy here. His back turned towards us, so we're going to sneak up. Do the same thing we did to the other guy. All right, get a Ritual Shield Talisman. This boosts your defense when you're at max HP. And then there's this giant Colosseum that we can't get inside. You see it on our map. Look at this thing. It's massive. Um, and there's a couple loots on either side of it. So now we're going to go all the way to the other side. My theory with these things are because they're all throughout the world. Like each region kind of has its own Colosseum. My theory is that there's going to be a DLC that involves these things somehow, some way. I, I could see this game having multiple DLCs. In fact, I'd be surprised if it doesn't have multiple DLCs. Um, but I, I think a, a DLC will have something to do with these giant structures that are all around here in the world. That currently serve no purpose, but 
you know, if you know anything about Miyazaki and his games, everything in the world has a purpose. So I see, uh, I see them doing something with these in the future. So we got the Star Fist, a very close range fist, spiky fist weapon you can use. So now we're going to head down here. And it's time to go up the tree roots. Let's see, where's the best part to get on? Yeah, probably back here. You see that gargoyle did not respawn, thank God. We're just gonna work our way up these roots, take these guys out as we see them. They may or may not drop goodies for us. There's a weapon hanging out right there. We're gonna get that as well. Yeah, there's a bunch of these guys out here. But they're pretty weak. Let's go up this way. Erd tree right, right next to us. I really don't even need to do jump attacks on these guys. I kill them with one single R1, so... Got the Guardian Greaves. Not as cool as the weapon, but whatever. All right, so we can jump on this little uh, rooftop here. I feel like they decided, hey, we we added a jump button in this game, so now we're going to make you explore every single roof that you come across. We got Holy Grease. Head back. So you could... You know, this this route wraps are all the way around there, but there's you can't get up top there, so don't don't even try. All right, so in here is going to be a boss battle. Um, I should be okay. I'm going to go ahead and pop my cerulean flask, and I'm going to summon right when I get inside. Um, he he has some decent combos. So the way that I go about him is if I'm fighting him up close, is sometimes he'll swing his weapon like two or three times in a row. So what I do is I just dodge, 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 and then hit, and uh, kind of rinse and repeat. When the aggro goes on my summon. Get some free hits in. Um, and I'll show you kind of what I mean when we get inside. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's see. In here, I'll pop the flask. And as soon as it lets me summon, I'm going to summon. So this is Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, or at least an apparition. So watch. You know, he, he has several attacks that'll do with his axe. So he has that overhead. And then usually, though, he follows. He has... Several attacks will do in a row. He has a stomp attack. See, there's, here he's doing his, his combo. Um, fortunately, it's on my summon and not on me. But now, now I've got it on me. he got that stomp attack. Um, so I just kind of dodge, dodge, dodge. Then you have an opening. And he does this combo over and over again. You know, gravity attack. I kind of got greedy there. If he, if he slams his axe into the ground, that's generally an indicator that you're going to have an opening to hit him. Right, right there, when he does the overhead slam. Back away heal when you need to. Whoops, I got hit there, unfortunately. I didn't get to take advantage of that. Dodge, 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 hit. It's kind of the cadence of this fight. And Lutel with the kill. Look at that. So we get our trophy for killing Godfrey the First Lord, or at least the uh, apparition of God Godfrey the First Lord. And we get our fourth and final talisman pouch. It's about time. So we have four pouches we can use here. So now the question is, what do I put in that fourth slot? Um, let's see. Enhances guard counters, blah, blah, blah. Not really. Uh, what pops out at me? I'm going to go ahead and probably do, do enhanced. Oh, here we go. Erdtree favor plus one. Should be, yeah, should have been an easy decision. I forgot that I had that. So look at my HP right now. Max is at uh, 1581. This boosts it to 1636. Max stamina at 133. This boosts it to 144. Equip load at 81. This boosts it. I mean, this is a no-brainer, actually, now that I think of it. Um, so yeah, we're going we're gonna to put that in our final slot, and that gives us a pretty solid stat boost. I mean, we're already doing really well in terms of stats, um, but this, 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 makes it even sweeter so and we can level up at least twice 
So again, going to pump one into uh, Dexterity and pump one into Vigor. That's going to be what we're going to be focusing on for the next probably several levels. Um, everything else is about where I want it. Uh, we might put a couple into Mind later just to get some extra FP to give us some extra flexibility with using our uh, special attacks um, in combat so we're not you know, at risk of running out as, as quickly as we do normally. Um, but yes, this is very solid. We are in really good shape for this point of the game. Um, so that way is the progression route. We're going to head this way first. There is some important stuff going this way. Um, namely, we're going to get another legendary armament, which we're going to need for the legendary armament trophy for those of you going for platinum. Um, let's see here. So we're going to we're going to grab pretty much all the the rest of the stuff around here. Just checking for loot and stuff. All right, so in here, I, th I thought there was something on the ground over here. I could be just misremembering, but wouldn't be the first time. Uh, okay, so in here we have an elevator. We're gonna take this down. So right here we have a developer's note on the ground and a big old statue of Radagon. Uh, it says, regression alone reveals secrets. This will be uh, important for a side quest that we're going to be doing later on in the game. So just kind of put that in the back of your mind. We will be coming back here to, to kind of uh, solve that riddle. There's actually another Crucible Knight that we're going to be coming up on here. So I'm going to put my Buckler Shield on to enhance my parries. And we also have another one of these things that runs around. And this one doesn't circle back around here, but we're going to chase after it up there and we'll be able to get the thing. All right, come on down. Take your punishment, sir. Another enemy in this, in this level that doesn't respawn that I also think is harder than the boss that we just fought. If you've, if you've learned how to parry these things, they're not too bad, but they are definitely a threat. Oop, too early on that. There we go. This is my preferred method of going through them. I showed you I showed you towards the beginning of the game how you can uh, fight these things by parrying and by dodging. I prefer the parry method myself, but really it's up to your play style and how you like to adapt to these things. Stomp, just jump up, and then it'll try to attack you right after, susceptible to parry. Here I might just try to do, yep, charged heavy, take him out for the win. But that's my preferred method of dealing with these guys. There, there's multiple ways of doing about it. That just happens to be my, the way that's most comfortable for me. If you're more comfortable with dodging or, or trying to block their attacks and do counters, then by all means, um, parrying does take a bit of use, of getting used to the timing on it and stuff. Ah, this thing's got me swinging around like a madman trying to hit it. There we go. Barrier of gold. Um, I forget what the requirements are for this thing. Um, but it's worth pointing out. 24 faith. Uh, greatly increases magic damage negation for the caster and nearby allies. Uh, th this is allies. It, this, this actually is um, probably most useful for PvP. Because folks who spam magic... Um, and spam, you know, magic-based weapon arts... Uh, most notably, probably the Moonveil Katana. This significantly reduces the damage. You do need 24 faith for it, but just a little bit on faith, like in stats in general. You can use... So we let's, let's just take a look real quick. We've got 10 faith at our disposal right now. You could always pop a couple levels into faith, you know, as you see fit. But we could also always use a Rune Arc, which will give us an additional 5. We can use the buff on the... Um, on the uh, uh, Grafted Greatsword, which will give us an additional five. There's a tier you can put in your Physic Flask that will give you an additional five. There's a... Do we have that Talisman yet? 
there's this talisman that'll give you an additional five faith. So that so popping the rune arc and having this talisman equipped alone will increase your faith by ten. And then and then we have Merica's Scar Seal, which gives you an additional three levels into faith. So there's so much that we have at our disposal that can increase your faith without having to actually invest levels into it that you have the flexibility to use some stuff like that as long as you just kind of swap out some of your equipment. So I just I just want to point that out, that you don't have to actually spend levels to increase your faith or, you know, strength or what have you, um, as long as you just know kind of what's at your disposal. So I mentioned there's a legendary armament. You see that shiny right there? That is our legendary armament. You can actually hop over this uh, this little break in the railing there, and you'll land right here. And we want to, we want to get up on this spear here. And this is important for those of you who want all the legendary armaments for the trophy. The Bolt of Grand Sacks, which is actually, in its own right, a pretty solid weapon. Um, it is a spear-type weapon, I believe. Let's see if we can get to it. Oh, I'm getting sniped up here. Dad gum. Okay, well, in that case, I'm going to read you the, the stuff somewhere else. Ha! <laughs> That's hilarious. Golly, that guy can't realize that I'm trying to record a walkthrough. He's got no respect. All right, here we are back at the side of Grace. I'm going to reset everything just so they're not following me. But I'm trying to I'm trying to help you all out here. All right, so uh, let's see. Bolt of Grand Sacks, that's where we were at. Um, at least I thought it was. Here it is. So it's a spear. Uh, does piercing damage. Uh, Ancient Lightning Spear is pretty solid weapon art. Um, level this thing up, and it's, you know, pretty solid. You need you need uh, 40 decks for it, though. And uh, it does split damage between physical and lightning. So um, I should have read the thing. Uh, let's see here. Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Down here. Yes, it is one of the legendary armaments, as I said. So if you're going for that trophy for the legendary armaments, you are going to need this. I'm going to warp back to here. Urtree Sanctuary. And we went that path before. We're going to go this way now. And this is actually the progression path forward. Um, there's nothing down here in that gazebo, but there is something in this side, I do believe. Yes, there is. All right, got some holy grease. As I said, the one on the other side, I, I do not believe there's any loot in there. I'm In fact, I'm almost certain there's no loot in there. Uh, what we can do is we can take this tree root up to the next level of this grand structure we have found ourselves in and out here. This is the path to the next boss. And yes, there are back-to-back -back bosses in this level. We just killed one of them and, the, and there's another one up there. Um, before we do that, we got some rooftop hopping to do. So go this way, jump over here. There's really nothing up here except for another nice view of the capital. Um, there is this open window up here. I need to put my lantern on. And there's this tree root right here that you can you can go up to get to something that we need to get in a bit. But there's also another way around on the other side. And there's also some loot over here that we're going to want to pick up on our way. So make sure you get this. Urge tree bow. And here we have a Celestial Dew for Absolution. And you can also kick this ladder down that connects us to the first floor. And we have another tree root over here that takes us to the same spot that the other one would have taken us. Um, and right here, this is an important item. Um, this is Golden Order Principia. Uh, this we can return to the Church of Vows or anyone who will teach us faith-based incantations. Um, and there is an in incantation that this... Uh, volume teaches us the law of regression. Remember that puzzle that I pointed out earlier that I said we were going to need to solve later? Um, that this The law of, of regression uh, incantation is required to solve that puzzle. And uh, so we need this to get that in incantation. So we're going to be doing that a bit later on when we do uh, one of the side quests. And it's required for an ending, an optional ending that is not required for a trophy. Um, but it is an ending. There are three endings that, that you get trophies for, and uh, this is not one of them. But we will be doing that side quest as well. And there is a Black Knife Assassin 
kind of all nonchalant over here. Oh, I got grabbed, man. Normally I punish that attack, but I'm gonna I'm gonna heal to be safe. This is the other attack that I like to punish, and I just got hit by it. Normally I, I can kill this guy, I can I can corner get it get it cornered before it even gets loose, but dodge that attack, that attack will uh, reduce your maximum HP if it hits you temporarily until you rest. Um, but those black knife assassins can be problems. Can be a Problematic. All right, so got another side of grace. Got another item. Blessing of the Ur tree. I believe that's a healing spell. Up there is our next boss. But we're going to go ahead and cut this episode right here. Um, at this side of grace, we're going to rest on up. We got one boss down in this episode. We'll get the next boss down in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this and found it useful to your own playthrough. And, um, Hope y'all take care, and I will catch you in the next one where we go up there to take on Morgoth. We'll have ourselves a good time, so uh, stay tuned. See you then.